Hello and welcome to today's build and today's build is the Airfix 172 Eurofighter Typhoon. Uh, it is a starter set and it comes with some paints and some brushes. Uh, however, I decided uh, to use mainly Tamiya and Vallejo products as you can see on the screen there. Uh, the kit's quite uh, quite basic with a couple of uh, sprues as it, as it would be for a, a starter set. However, what I would say is it was lacking a lot of detail. But again, I appreciate it's a starter set for beginners and it has a skill level uh, level two on the side of the box. I did have a few uh, problems uh, fitting it together. It, if I'm being honest, it wasn't the best kit and it was quite frustrating in parts. However, um, I got it together and I was relatively happy with the final uh, output. One thing I would say about the instructions was, although there's only five steps, and if you've got a little bit of common sense, it's, it's very easy to uh, follow along. Uh, however, I would say they were quite busy. Uh, there was quite a lot going on in the later later steps, and if it could be quite overwhelming, that's what I was trying to get at um, with the instructions. Lots of lines, lots of parts put together. So I started by uh, giving it a wash in some warm soapy water with a splash of vinegar uh, just to get rid of any uh, any residue and then I had my cutters and I started with the cockpit and I would probably say the cockpit was the easiest part to put together. Very basic, very simple, like again it's a, it's a starter set however there is a lot of scope on this model to, uh, to add detail to the cockpit and it was only as the build was progressing that I started to think oh I could have added this, could have added that to the cockpit. Um, but I digress. Uh, again, quite a bit of flash and seam lines with this model kit and uh, I want to say ejector moulds. Um, I had to do a lot of sanding and again I'll uh, elaborate that on later. With the cockpit, because I just wanted to keep it simple, I decided to put it together first before I started individually, instead of individually spraying any parts. Did a lot of dry fitting and then when I was happy I got the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement and used that uh, to secure it all together. I've been fortunate enough to sit in the seat of one of these uh, Eurofighter Typhoons, uh, Six Squadron up at, uh, I want to say Lucas, up near Dundee and the cockpit is it's incredible. If you see some images there's so many buttons and dials uh, it's quite a phenom phenomenal bit of kit, um, but I just I just went with some XF76 just to paint the seat and just keep it really simple. And I added a little bit of grey to the footwell, and I put some red on the uh, on the control stick and what looked like some canisters on the back. Uh, it's not entirely accurate, but I just want to keep it simple and add some variety. And here's the finished cockpit, as you can see, very simple, very basic, but it's nice and neat and it went together quite nicely. Next, the main uh, part of the kit, uh, like I elaborated before, there's a lot of sanding required, even when I was using the sprue cutters to try and cut close to the sprue or cut close to the part, it still required a lot of sanding and dry fitting. And it just felt with this kit that, yes, it's a starter set, but it just it felt like it hadn't gone through quality control, if I'm being uh, brutally honest. Um, again, there's a part coming up later on with the air intake where it was just it was really frustrating. Nevertheless, uh, I got it together uh, without any without any hiccups. And again, the extra thin cement came out when it was content after lots of dry fitting, and it went together nicely.
once the, uh, the parts that I was happy with to the main uh, fuselage or the main body, uh, then it was just time to just give a little spray uh, to, the, uh, to the upper part, masked off uh, nice and neatly with some Tamiya tape, and I just gave it a light coat of Vallejo surface primer uh, as this was going underneath the canopy and it needed to be painted beforehand. And there's the, uh, the cockpit glued in nice and securely. Attaching the uh, canopy uh, was, again, quite frustrating. Uh, the parts, when cut down, um, didn't fit correctly, leaving large gaps. So they had to be sanded down. And once I was content with that, it came in two parts. I glued it together with some PVA glue as it dries uh, clear and you can't see it. But like I said, it was quite frustrating. Together, I began uh, getting rid of the seam lines. Again, I appreciate this to get it on models but with this kit they were just absolutely everywhere and um, use my uh, trusty sandy sanding stick which has a coarse side and a smooth side and then I had some uh, extra fine uh, sandpaper I'm not sure what grit but it was a lot more smoother and it, it kind of gave it a nice finish and it, those seam lines just disappeared Then when it came to attaching the air intake, this is where I started to have problems. So, I used some uh, Vallejo plastic putty, uh, grabbed a cocktail stick and put it into the gaps. And some of these gaps, um, even after a little bit of sanding, trying to get it fit, they're absolutely ginormous. I, I did feature some images on my Instagram um, at 45 degrees modeling. Uh, link will be in the description below but I used the putty I put it on there I let it dry and then I spent hours sanding it down trying to get it to fit it was really really frustrating uh, but again it improves your uh, your modeling skills so I can't really complain too much but I got to the point of frustration where I was like yeah let's just get this primer down and uh, we'll see how we go from there so I spent a lot a lot of time now uh, sanding this air intake, making it nice and smooth. Uh, the finish at the end wasn't too bad. Again, looking at images of the Eurofighter Typhoon, there's lots and lots of detail missing from this area of the model. I know it's a 172, and again, it's a starter set, I appreciate that, but there was lots and lots missing. Whether it was based on an earlier model and it's since been adapted, I, I'm not too sure, but. Yeah, there was a lot of detail, uh, lots of detail missing, but as long as it was smooth uh, and a nice finish, I, I was quite content. This is just a basic build. Then I used some Humbrol Mask On. Uh, it's one of my favorite products for masking canopies. Always does a really good job. Um, in hindsight, I do, do feel I should have put some tape down maybe and then added Mask On on top, uh, just for taking it off to get a clean, a clean line between the paint and the canopy but I cleaned it up afterwards and there was no problems and this is what it looks like with the mask all dried off and it's it's really satisfying uh, when you put it on with the surface tension next came the priming and again I used the Vallejo black surface primer and those eagle-eyed amongst you uh, we'll notice I've already primed the top. Uh, this was a 0.4mm needle uh, set at 20 psi with my new compressor uh, and airbrush. And I was this is my first time using it, I was really happy. However, I did have a bit of a drama when I first applied the, the primer because I was too keen, too excited to get the primer down. I forgot to shake the bottle and it was really cold outside and it, it beaded so. Um, it needed rectifying. Nevertheless, I sorted it out and it primed uh, really nice. I'm a big fan of the, the Vallejo primer. And then once it was happy, uh, okay, I swapped my needles out. I got a 0.2 millimeter needle, set it to 15 PSI, uh, practiced on some spoons and I practiced the modeling effect. And this is what I wanted to build this model for. Bit of a, a stop gap before Christmas. I uh, used some Tamiya XF2, the white, and I just want to give a modeling effect so once I put the XF19 down, the sky grey, there would some be 
some variation of tone underneath the paint and just to add some visual interest uh, with some dark lines and amongst those panel lines it's, it's a technique I really like and I just wanted to practice it again uh, it does take a bit of practice you have to keep your hand moving to keep that modeling effect going and there was a couple of times on the underside where I failed to do that but I managed to rectify it and I was, uh, I was quite happy with the uh, end product Uh, now swapping over back to a 0.4mm needle and keeping it at 15 psi throughout I applied the XF19 Sky Grey and I applied this uh, in a few coats um, being very conscious and careful not to, uh, not to hide that pre-shading underneath and again it came out really nicely the, the airbrush was fantastic what I was doing though because the weather's been quite cold and my bench is in the garage I was taking my paint, paints in uh, into my house on an evening uh, just to keep them at a, uh, a nice temperature so they weren't getting, uh, weren't getting too cold and that's a practice I'm going to continue uh, throughout the winter especially after I had the, uh, the lesson identified with the primer and the beading. Then after the first coat I applied a uh, second coat, I kept the coats nice and light, I was giving them plenty of time to dry, um, I paint the top, let it dry, take it inside, let it dry, paint the underside, let it dry, come back, paint the top, let it dry. Um, again I'm not much of an aircraft builder, I built a couple of aircraft before but during this build I was really thinking I need, uh, need some sort of aircraft stand uh, just to make life a lot easier. And I think that's a product I'm gonna kind of purchase very soon. And here's the uh, finished product that I was uh, I was really happy with. Then it was time um, to do what we call the exhaust uh, again with this. I use some gunmetal X10, and I use some X11 on the back of the fuselage as well, and all the other little add-ons, uh, wheels and such and the armaments uh, are sprayed in a variety of shades of the uh, XF19. Using the uh, XF2 here, just on the wheel and on the landing gears and with the armament, I, I mixed it up and again, uh, you'll see a picture in a minute. I just uh, added some XF1 just to uh, darken it up and add some visual interest. And here's the finished product, <clears throat> excuse me. And here's the armament, nice and crisp. And if you see the 45 degrees symbol there, that's why I named this channel 45 degrees modeling, because every time I look down at my cutting mat, I see that 45 degrees modeling. And next it was to work, uh, to put down a clear coat of Tamiya X22. And again, 0.4 millimeter needle at 15 PSI. And I've been having problems with uh, decaling recently on the last few models. For some reason it's just I've always had some silver in uh, so I really wanted to uh, try something different this time so I put down a clear coat and I was really satisfied I didn't show it uh, because I really wanted to concentrate my decal in but I was very happy and I had no silver in you'll be happy to to know then came the panel lines and again you can see how it runs gave the uh, panel line accent color a good uh, good for a stir applied it over the uh, clear coat and it ran beautifully and I applied this all over all over the aircraft. However, I'm only showing you the rear wing because it's the same. Uh, it's the same all over. And then once I was happy with that, I just took uh, took some enamel thinners on a brush, brushed the majority off, and then I cleared it off. And you'll see here. And I apologise for the uh, the camera footage. Uh, some mist got inside the lens. Uh, but I brushed with a flat brush with a little bit of enamel thinner on, uh, mostly taken off, but I brushed in the uh, wind direction and it gave a nice weathered effect as well. 
I was going to add some uh, Newton and Windsor oil paints afterwards, but I was quite content with the effect that was given uh, with the panel line, uh, the panel line wash. All in all, I would say it's not too bad a build. Uh, it was just the frustrating part of the uh, air intake and the sanding and trying to get it fit. It, it doesn't fit. Um, doesn't fit the best. And yeah, it's a it's a fun, quick little build, and it it improves your skills when uh, when it comes to sanding and, uh, and dry fitting. That's that's for sure. And there's lots of scope to add lots of details to this model kit. And I finished it off with the Tamiya Weathermaster. I had uh, set B, and I just added a little bit of black with the applicator just around the uh, around the exhaust, just to break up that silver, that uh, X11 that you can see. Again, where there would be uh, where there would be some build up just to just to dirty it off. And yeah, it uh, it came out quite nicely. Uh, I was very happy. Uh, points I want to work on with the decals. Um, which I achieved. Uh, work on points, I would probably just say taking my time it could get quite frustrating in parts. However, I was very satisfied with it. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them uh, in the description below. And I'll leave you with a few images of the finished product. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in a build very soon.